Hi everyone, uh, welcome to a, another episode of Trident Talks. Uh, today I'm delighted to be joined by uh, Mark Whitley and Xu Chen Hu, uh, who are from Black Panda over in Asia. Hi guys. Very How well, are? thank you. Very well, pleasure to be with you. Yeah, good. Yeah, thank, thanks Same for joining here. us. Good, good to hear. Um, so look, a lot of you, a lot of uh, a lot of people, especially sort of UK, uh, may not have heard of you guys. Um, so it'd be good to, to start off by getting a little bit of, uh, of of a background and a bit of info from you guys. So, Black Panda are uh, an incident response specialist based over in Hong Kong and Singapore. Um, Mark, if you want to give us some info and insight into into your background and your role in the company, that'd be great. Can do, Sean. Sure. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, so Black Panda is an incident response company, cyber incident response company uh, in Asia. And we have a footprint pretty much all through through Asia, specifically headquartered in Hong Kong, Singapore, reach into Japan. We, we cover a much wider range than that. Um, we have a number of uh, obviously physical incident responders around the region, but um, we also have built some, uh, some pretty cool technology that allows us to respond remotely just about everywhere. Uh, including uh, Maritime, uh, which is quite interesting. My specific role in the company is uh, I'm Vice President of Digital Forensics and Incident Response. So I, I lead the Digital Forensics and Incident Response team. Um, we're, we're a team around about eight permanent people. Um, we, we have a great, great team, very experienced people. Uh, everyone gets along very well. We, Black Pen has got a, a sort of a military background, I guess. Not all of us are military people, but that's... That's where it originated from, um, from some special forces people who uh, got together and uh, recognised a pretty good opportunity in, in Asia and uh, started the company. Uh, and and moved. Shu Chen is on the team. She's a uh, very, very experienced campaigner and uh, we're very lucky to have her. Shu Chen is actually one of the top 20 women in cybersecurity recently awarded. So wow, congratulations, nice. Shu Chen. Yes. Congratulations, yeah. Um, my, and I'll let Shu Chen introduce herself in a moment. My, my background is uh, primarily in corporate and law enforcement. Um, most recently spent a lot of time in the Australian Federal Police, uh, digital forensics team attached to the crime unit. Um, before that was um, international uh, pharmaceutical company in, in Switzerland, uh, also NGO based out of Switzerland. Um, and again, before that was uh, Federal Police again back in back in Australia, and before that was a uh, anti-corruption role uh, in Australia. So um, quite a very background, a lot of a lot of high tech specialisation in there, which which uh, I'm pleased to be able to bring. The group has far more skill sets than, than what I can bring alone. So uh, I'll hand over to Shu Chen, who shared a little bit about her background. Sure, thank you, Mark, and thank you, Sean. Um, yeah, so I'm Shushan, as Mark mentioned, I'm one of the digital forensics and incident response specialists uh, working for Mark in, in, in the team. Um, my previous background um, before joining Black Panda was mainly actually in the financial industries. Uh, I started my career uh, information security and, and computer engineering in National University of Singapore. So while um, at the cyber, big cybersecurity team in JP Morgan, I had some exposures, mainly focusing on, on incident response and threat hunting. At the same time, also a little bit towards um, products management, uh, cyber products, um, including um, AI and uh, machine learning, uh, as well as some exposure to the governance and control side. Um, afterwards, I moved over to Intercontinental Exchange, which is also uh, in the financial industry. Um, my focus then shifted more towards the digital forensics and incident response, which aligns with my current work. Um, uh, the, the change from working from the two previous companies to uh, now at Black Panda is mainly from, uh, previously I was working in the internal team. My sort of customer is always the company itself. So I always try to uh, fight crimes and actually being able to uh, help uh, all kinds of different kinds of customers, different sizes of companies. And at the same time, me myself is getting exposed to uh, all sorts of different kinds of threats and incidents where I could learn tremendously as well. Nice, nice. Th th thanks for that. Um, I think what's really interesting and <clears throat> something that uh, obviously follows a trend across different locations is uh, we see it a lot here in the UK. So there seems to be two um entries into sort of the dfir uh market if you like so someone moving into the market from a previous uh previous role would tend to be 
um, someone in law enforcement, so someone like yourself, Mark, I think that's very, very common. And that, that follows a similar trend here in the UK. A lot of people that I speak to that are in DFIR um, were previously um, working for uh, local constabularies uh, across the UK. Um, and then also, Shuchen, you've got yourself who've, who's come from a completely different background, but ultimately still doing a similar job, which is really interesting. So do, do you guys, um, I mean, Shuchen, from your side of things, do you uh, have any advice for um, people who are looking to move into the sort of DFIR market in Asia, like a route to take that, that you took that you found worked quite well? Um, have you got any advice on that for people? Um, yeah, absolutely. So I think, uh, actually, I've got um, asked this question many times before as well. And I think um, currently there's actually definitely a big demand in terms of this, this uh, cybersecurity related jobs in Asia. Um, so um, I, I think my advice to whoever is interested is that um, try to, you know, understand more in terms of this area. And then because this area is actually so big, um, you know, try to, you know, talk to people who are actually maybe related or currently working to this area. Um, there are different kind of uh, sharing groups set up and, uh, and maybe so there are a lot of information available and there are different talks, conferences and trainings available as well. So first, you know, try to step into or closer to, to, the, to the community. And then, you know, from there, you could also better understand your, your interests and where do you want to move on next steps. And then I, I would definitely recommend for the next steps is after you, you know better in terms of what you, you, you want and you're interested in to um, sort of plan ahead that which is needed for for the job so um i think as cybersecurity gets more and more uh, uh focused everywhere and by the government the the schools and universities are offering this kind of courses as well and there are also outside trainings available so i would definitely suggest uh uh people to actually you know look up online resources talk to people who may actually be in this area you know find out more information and then plan for the next steps you're always welcome to, you know, reach out to Black Panda as well. Thank you. That's really helpful. Um, so I think, for, so I know a little bit about you guys having, uh, having spoken to a number of your colleagues before. Um, and I know that in, in the sort of Asian market, you guys are real specialists in what you do and, and you've built up a real good reputation like, very, very quickly. Um, and that, that, that's great. Like, that, that obviously speaks for itself. Um, what do you guys do? I'll ask this to you, Mark. What do you guys do or offer um, that's different from your competitors? Um, or how do you feel you're, you've built up that reputation so, so well, should we say? Yeah, good question, Sean, actually. We, so we're, we're really enjoying quite a bit of momentum at the moment. And um, we pride ourselves, I guess, on our responsiveness. We, the origins of Black Panda, as I said, come from a military background, and some of the early founders uh, ran a, a crisis, more of a crisis-driven form of the company, and that required a very uh, prompt uh, capability to be able to respond to anything. And we've been fortunate to inherit that kind of mentality into our into our cyber incident response, and that's what everybody that we other people who are involved. Uh, people who follow us on LinkedIn, you can follow Black Panda on LinkedIn. That's what everybody seems to be really valuing at the moment. There's a there's a big uh, there's a differentiator we understand uh, between some of our competitors and ourselves in that we're able to typically respond much faster than anybody else, and in part that's due to a lot of the operational uh, experience that we have or, or and training and SOPs that we build and through Panda Recon, which enables us to respond almost instantly to any kind of cyber res response. Um, and and that's, that's really what's important to, to customers. You know, you can imagine once, once you suspect that your house is on fire, you want a, you want a pretty rapid response. And, and, our, and we're proud of our reputation in that space. That that's what we deliver. Okay, good. No, I think that, yeah, speaks for itself. Um, that's the, the most important part of your job, right? Is, uh, it, like you said, putting out the fire as quickly as possible. And if you guys are really good at that, then I, I can understand why the reputation has built so quickly. Um, quite interested to get your thoughts on uh, the future of the market in terms of uh, in your locations. Um, obviously, probably like the rest of the world, like cybersecurity is booming at the moment. There's more of a need for it than ever. Um, 
do you guys see that stopping? Are you are you on a, an, an upwards trend all the time, just busier and busier, or, or have you got any projections that you you see over the next year or so? Yeah, incredible times. Um, we, and I think we're all on the same page in the space that this this is this is huge. What's happening? And and I don't say that from an excited point of view. I say that from um, an amazement point of view. Really, it's just incredible the rate that uh, cyber is being across the globe. We all know that computers are prolific now. They're in every every facet. I think the the average the average home has about 25 different IP addresses connected to, to their home Wi-Fi router. So imagine what that means for, for the corporation. Overlay that with the amount of people who are actually working from home due to COVID or the amount of connectivity that is expected from not only uh, information technology, IT, but also operational technology, OT. You know, there's a lot of all that tied with, unfortunately, an incredible uh, drive into cryptocurrencies that is uh, very much desired and, and valued by attackers as a medium for leveraging their successful attacks. Um, there's, there's, huge, there's huge growth here. The attackers are really well organized, well-funded individuals and groups now, mm. more, um, professional in, in, their, in what they do. So I'll give, you, I'll give you a small example on that, Sean. Attackers used to be all about getting access to an environment, maybe stealing a few bits of information, or even doing some damage and then, and then getting out there and laughing about it. Could even be trying to um, blackmail the victim. What, what we see now uh, as a worrying trend is organised attackers will actually gain entry, anybody know, either to stay there dormant, collecting a lot of information, which is not unusual, but more and more and more what we see is they'll actually sell that attack to other bodies, other people, for a profit, you know, for Bitcoin, and then there's another attack group involved, which is which is a, a really worrying trend because we're talking about now people who are experts in identifying vulnerabilities and leveraging, if you like, the customer into the, the victim into paying uh, any kind of a ransom, over to an organised crime group or someone who is good at that side of the house, and then will happily pay the money because they they can try and uh, strong arm the victim, so. Lots of trends in that space that are, that are really worrying. And uh, the amount of activity that we see, particularly on the dark web, mirrors that. So yeah. the, that's, where we, that's how we know. We do a lot of research in the web. We, we've got a lot of uh, investment in time and, and research there, which is one of our strengths. Uh, and quite often, um, we see a few indicators that, that are a bit of a worrying trend. So the, the, the demand for people like us and Black Panda is, is growing exponentially. I, I think I saw a, a statistic the other day, there's about 30 million jobs globally unfilled uh, for cyber people, including some careers or that has an interest, loves the thrill of the chase, you know, has a bit of an investigative mind. Uh, good time to get into it, really. Yeah, and no, I couldn't I could agree. Uh, Absolutely agree. More. Yeah. <laughs> have, have you got anything to add to that, Xu Chen? Um, in terms of like what 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 you see and expect in trends, or um, so I think Mark's got it covered. Uh, particularly, I think uh, there have been also different kind of statistics for uh, talking about cyber landscapes for. 2020 and 2019 and year before. So it has always been increasing. Mm -hmm. And this the, their statistics also aligns with what we are seeing in terms of the cases we got. Um, I think two particular one we saw which were most uh, common was uh, business email compromise as well as uh, ransomware incidents. So for those type of attacks, it's just getting um, more and the threat access are also getting more and more sophisticated in their techniques. So um, definitely the cybersecurity jobs is actually in great demand and, yeah. and it should be taken seriously by all the companies as well. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Uh, and I see it all the time. Like a lot of my customers this year have been busier than ever. Um, there's so much demand for people, but it's it's finding the right people with the right skill sets. Um, but there also needs to be an element, and, and this is something I feel quite strongly about is, there needs to be an element of organizations um, offering maybe upskilling or training in certain areas, having people with the right attitude and the right core skills and then being able to train them up. 
Um, and I think that's something that globally we lack a little bit in at the moment. Um, and I think a lot of organisations just want someone to come in, hit the ground running and be able to do the job. Um, it's not everyone. Like there is organisations out there that will take people on and upskill them. And But I think we need to see it more. Um, but it's quite a it's quite a tricky process because you, you 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 want these people to come in and be able to help right but it's not always um they're not always uh perhaps up to speed in terms of technology and skills to be able to just jump straight yeah. in so it's how do you tackle that yeah the, so it's a valid point um and of course everybody would love to hire you know and work with the, the most skilled well trained uh, I guess that's one of the advantages of coming from a large organisation like mm. uh, JP Morgan or, or even a military or law enforcement background. You do tend to have a lot of not only training but practical real-world experience. And, and my view is that they're both equally important. Uh, however, the, tra the training through the commercial providers, as good as they are, can be a little bit cost prohibitive, mm -hmm. um, which, which leads to more uh, on-the-job training, I guess. And you... Obviously, that means you're looking for uh, an organisation that's, that's willing to bring you up through the through through the ranks, so to speak. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that either. A, a lot of people that we see, that we work with, or um, that we our, our social network is very strong on LinkedIn. We we have lots of uh, friends in this space globally. That um, you you can grow your skill set exponentially by just sitting in the chair yeah. and watching watching a couple of these things unfold. But more important than that, there's a lot that the, that the, the training, so the university or the private providers, actually can't give you. It's not that they don't want to or they don't know about it. They're all experts. They're certainly experts. But sometimes when it does, it takes someone who can think a little bit more laterally and, yeah. and apply a bit of their background or a bit of their logic or a bit of their suspicion to it, right? And that's that's kind of the, where that thrill of the, the hunt, the thrill of the chase comes into it to try and resolve this as fast as you can for your customer. Because at the end of the day, that's that's what we're trying to do. We are we are desperately trying to get the customer situation under control, uh, and world experience can prepare you for those kinds of crisis situations yeah. so as good as your technical training is and as valuable as, as valuable as it is um really a bit of a bit of real world experience is, is where it's at and i can promise you there is plenty of it at the moment yeah <laughs> yeah you're right and I, I, I agree i agree with you completely and i think that's why people from backgrounds um similar backgrounds to yourself um law enforcement police officers uh, military personnel as well that have been on the front line should we say make really good cyber security people because they have that uh, not necessarily the technical skills that can be taught but they have that those life experiences um so i, I completely agree with you um yeah. okay cool Look, i really i really appreciate the insight so a quick quick uh, question light-hearted question just to wrap up what what would you be doing uh if you wasn't in cyber shu chen let's 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 start with you what, what would you be doing that's a very interesting question. <laughs> um, so if I'm not in cyber, um, to be honest, so one of my hobbies is to actually uh, about acting and, and start up stand up comedy. So nice. of course, in, in my native language, that's Chinese. So I if I'm actually not doing any career in cyber or cyber related, I might be actually pursuing way which is completely different from cybersecurity. However, what helps right now is uh, in my own time when I actually go do, uh, you know, just as a hobby, when I actually talk in a stand up comedy, uh, I have plenty of my cyber experience, which I could talk about. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, well, yeah, I I'm not sure, you know, that would that that's a very interesting question uh, to yeah, me. That there's also one thing I would want to add to my advice to people who actually want to. Yeah you know, enter cyber. Um, so uh, Black Panda does have a LinkedIn account, which constantly publicize um, different kind of uh, uh, reports, uh, webinars. Um, and actually we have a weekly Asia cyber summary, which kind of covers the, the, the key uh, notes about what happened in the previous week and it's all cyber related. So that's a great place for you to, you know, get start to get more information and get to know, understand the, the threat landscape as well as, you know, some 
tips there, you might be able to, you know, pick up some tricks as well. Mm, thank you. I, I um I would ask you to to tell us a joke, but my uh my Chinese is not very good, so <laughs> probably probably wouldn't go down too well. But Lola, on your on the um uh, the, the 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 subject you touched on there about Black Panda's weekly updates, I actually read them every week, and they're really interesting, especially for someone <laughs> like myself who's in the UK and we don't get an oversight into the Asian market that much. Obviously, the news we get is always always UK focused. So it's really interesting. Um, so, so thanks for, for highlighting that. Um, Mark, what about you? If you wasn't in cyber, what, what would you be doing? Oh, well, I, I, it's a great question. I haven't been asked that one before, I'll, I'll be honest, but it's pretty easy for me to answer. I've got, I've got a great love of uh, all things travel and food. And uh, I've been fortunate to, well, send. Everywhere I go, I like to learn a little bit of the language and, and pick up a, little, a few recipes to bring home. And it's one of the great things about Black Panda. We've got, we've got quite a, a diverse team of people and they're all great. They're all great individuals. And um, even during times of COVID, but you know, we, we all get on the Zoom and have a bit of a chat. And usually I'm the one that's asking about different bits of food or how do we say this in a different language or you know, whatever. So, Black Pan is fortunate and it's got quite a good coverage of different cultures and uh, that, that satisfies my little, uh, my little uh, pankering there. But if I, if I wasn't in cyber at all, um, I'd probably have a backpack on, I think. Yeah, nice. Yeah. <laughs> good answer. Um, yeah. look, look, guys, I've really enjoyed speaking to you both today. Thank, thanks for your time. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll wrap that up there. And yeah, if, if, um, if you guys got anything else to add or, or are you quite happy with everything? I'd just like to thank you for the time, Sean. It's, uh, it's been great to talk to you. And I really hope that, that the people who can take some time to watch the video yeah. learn a little bit. Uh, if there's any questions or would like to learn a little bit more, if there's an interest in getting into this, the instrument response space, you know, both Shu Chen and I are on LinkedIn, Black Pan is on LinkedIn, people young and old who are looking to get into the space and just asking some questions. And we're more than happy to talk to people about that. Additionally, as uh, Shu Chen pointed out, we, we do have a couple of great resources and you know you can subscribe to things like the Asia Cybersecurity uh, Summary and uh, get, get some intel into what's going on around here. We, we have got you know, a bit of a background about supporting companies, not only in Asia, but also European or American companies that happen to have uh, Asian, uh, Asian entities out here that, that may need our assistance. Uh, so, look, we, we uh, will talk to anybody. We, we just want to help people, honestly. We love what we do and we think we're quite good at it, really, um, to the point actually where we have what we call zero cost retainer. So, it doesn't cost anything just to come and talk to Black Panda, sign up. And if you're ever in trouble, uh, that, um, that's generally what we want to do. We want to, we want to help people as fast as we can. So, Check it out. And if there's any any queries, anything you want to talk about, we're, we're always here. All right, Shu Chen? Yeah, absolutely. Follow us on LinkedIn. Follow Black Panda on LinkedIn. And then yeah. I had a great time talking to you, Sean, as well. Perfect. Thanks, guys. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. All the best.